So hey guys, today I'm working on a car that has two keys. One is for the ignition switch, while one is for the door lock. As you can see, this key works perfectly fine in the ignition switch. However, this key that works in the door does not work whatsoever. So what I'm gonna be doing is rekeying the door lock to work with the ignition switch. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So as you can see here, the ignition switch key does not work. But if I go over to this key here, it does work in the door. So the first thing I need to do is get the door handles off. So as mentioned, the first thing we need to do is remove these door handles. And in order to do that, you just open the door and you're gonna find a Phillips head screw right there inside. With the screw removed, you're now ready to remove the door handle. All you need to do is pull it forward and then you can pull back on it and then just wiggle it out. So I'm pulling forward on it and the door handle should just come off like that. You can see I've got some tape here as not to scuff the paint. Next, I'm gonna be removing a pin that's underneath here and the plastic door lock actuator. So here you can see the pin and I'm just gonna use a pick to push it out. As you can see, the pin is now removed. So with the pin removed, I can now reach in there and unsnap the plastic door lock actuator. With those two removed, I should now be able to remove the door handle. With the door handle out, I just need to remove this Phillips head screw here and we'll be able to remove the lock cylinder. With the screw removed, all you need to do is pull these off here and you're going to find a spring in behind there and I'll show you how to put that back on later. But as for now, you just push here and the lock cylinder will come out. With the cylinder removed, you can now see how this works. As you can see, there's two sets of pins on each side, which slide into the grooves inside the door handle there, which keep it in place. And only when you insert the correct key, will it get these to lay flat so you can lock and unlock the door. So here's the lock with the correct key inserted. As you can see, it's perfectly smooth and it's gonna retract the pins from those grooves in there and then you'll be able to turn it. So here's the cylinder with the incorrect key installed. As you can see, some of the pins are still sticking out, which won't let you turn it. So if you take a closer look here, you'll also see that some of the pins are too far in. So what we can do is start swapping these pins around until they start working with the key that we want to use. In order to remove the pins, all you need to do is gently pull up on them and they'll come right out. But what you may want to do before you start doing this is insert the key, take a few pictures and see where everything lines up. Then make sure that you remove all these pins in order and then you can start rearranging them. So one thing you can do also is use the key profile here. This first one goes down pretty well with this key, but as you can see, there's a shoulder there and so it doesn't go down all the way. So what I'm gonna do is try this one next and see if that's a better match. So through some trial and error, I now have two pins inserted that are gonna work perfect. The first one on this side here was a perfect match. However, this one down here needed to be swapped with the other one. And I'm just gonna keep going. So I've rearranged these the best I can. And as you can see, I still got one sticking up here. In this situation, you could just file this down, but I have another door lock here that I'm not using. I'm gonna remove a pin from it and see if I can't find a better match. So you can see here on number three, I'm gonna need one that lays flat. And if I go here and turn the lock cylinder the same way, See, number three sticks up on this one as well. So I'm gonna have to figure out which one's gonna be a better fit for three. Okay. All right, with the help of this other lock cylinder, we were able to find a better match and now this key should unlock the door.
All right, even though these work pretty well, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just file them gently until they are perfectly flush. And then we shouldn't have any problems here. And when we're done, this key here will be the only one that can unlock this door. All right, so once you got it smoothed down with the file, that's just gonna ensure that it moves smoothly. Next thing you're gonna do is spray it out. All right, I got everything greased up. So the next thing I'm gonna install is this spring and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You wanna put this bottom part right up against that post and then you're just gonna take it and swap it over just like that. And you're gonna take this and put it back on just like that. Should do it you just need to install your screw And just like that, you've re-keyed your door lock. With the lock cylinder reinstalled, next I'll put the door handle back on, starting with the pin. All right guys, I got the door handle back on and this is the ignition key before he needed a separate key, but this key now works in this door handle. And if I take the original key here that worked, you'll see that it no longer works. And over on this side, I'm gonna be doing the same exact process. As you can see here, the ignition switch key does not work, nor does this other key. I have the other door handle rekeyed now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it on. I've got the other door handle on now, and as you can see, the ignition key works perfectly. And no other key, including this one here, will work. All right, guys, I got everything rekeyed now, and I'll take you around and show you that this one ignition key now fits every lock on this car. It also works in the trunk here. And then finally, over here on the passenger side. So the owner of this car is going to be very happy, I'm sure. Since this old key no longer works anywhere on the car, I don't think the owner's gonna mind if I go ahead and throw this one away. All right, guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. Now, keep in mind that if you file down or remove any of the pins that aren't laying flat in your lock, then you do run the risk of having other keys that may work in there as well. The only real way to avoid that is, of course, to do it like we did in the video and have a spare lock on hand in which you can mix and match the pins from it as well until you find the correct one. Alternatively, you can order these from the dealership using your VIN, but we find it takes a whole lot less time and it's a whole lot cheaper to just go ahead and fix the locks the way we did in this video. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to stay up to date with some of the projects working on around the shop, be sure to join us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. I also want to thank everyone who supports this channel on Patreon since these videos would not be possible without you. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.